Hi and welcome to the Mathemagic channel. Today, this math strategies for our young learners, for first and second graders. Let's go. So this is a question that gets asked a lot by parents and of course, I mean, how difficult is it to really understand what goes through the mind of a first grader or a second grader? How easy is it to make it simple? How easy is it to give them strategies which they can use on the fly and which are going to be very useful to them? Now, the first thing to say is that I'll outline a lot of strategies in this video. You don't have to use all of them. Just like as an adult, you take what is useful and you leave what is not. Once your child has understood a way that works, let them run with it. This is really, really important. You don't need to work at every technique and be a jack of all trades and master of none. So for today's topics, let's make sure that we work on these together and then perhaps you can suggest one of those to your child. I hope this is going to be useful to you. The first strategy, which is actually pretty essential, is number bonds. And number bonds are connecting values which get you to a block of 10. These are very commonly taught in school and it's very important that your child is super clear on number bonds. So that'll be the first thing we'll explore today. The next point we'll explore is compensation. So using numbers which are easier to work with so that you can get to your result. Today we're also going to look at doubles and why doubles are super important. We're also going to look at decomposition and how breaking numbers down can make calculations easier. We'll look at adding up and how we can go from a number and add certain quantities to it to get to the number we want. This works a lot for subtraction. And then for our last strategy, we'll look at what we call the constant difference, which is adding a similar quantity to both sides to make sure that you can get to the result you want. So let's first talk about number bonds and why they're so essential. So number bonds are pairs of numbers which add up to 10. So a number bond typically will be something like 1 and 9, or 2 and 8, or 3 and 7, or 4 and 6, or 5 and 5. And it's important that you know that 1 is friends with 9, and 9 is friends with 1. So we have games like friendly numbers that we can play with our children. Who's the friendly 10 for 1? Oh, it's 9. Who's the friendly 10 for 3? Oh, it's 7. Now, number bonds is a skill that you can learn relatively quickly. It can also be extended, which is fabulous. So we'll look at that in a second. But why do they matter so much? Well, simply speaking, we work in a hexadecimal system. We've decided as human beings to work in base 10. So it's very important that we know and that our children know how to get to the next block of 10. And so this will have to do with getting to the next block of 10, the block of 20, block of 100, block of 1000. And once those quantities are clear in your mind, which they might not be for a first grader or second grader, then mathematics will become a lot easier. So we can extend number bonds to go beyond 1 and 9. Uh, we can actually do friendly numbers to 20. So what is the friendly 20 for 11? Well, it's 9. What's the friendly 30 for 22? Well, that's 8. So once you know your quantities up to 10, you can extend that for quantities up to 20, 30, 40, all the way through to 90, which is quite tricky, or even 100, which is pretty essential. So examples like 43 and 57. So what is the friendly 100 for 43? Oh, it's 57. Um, and this will also help you later on when you want to work with decomposition so that you know what you need to add to get to the next big number. So here's a question which I received last week and pretty frequently from some of our parents. Uh, I want my child to use their fingers to count, but the school teacher says it's preferable not to. And so this is from a dear parent. And why is that? You might ask yourselves. Well, thinking about adding quantities like going from 9 to 12 and going 9, 10, 11, 12, it's okay to count forward and add quantities. But when you want to work backwards and go 12, 11, 10, 9, it's very clunky to count on your fingers. And for that reason, it is preferable to learn blocks of 10 so that you can easily decompose numbers and use number bonds to get to the next block rather than try and use calculations which are not really going to be, uh, first of all, things that you can build on because you won't be able to count on your fingers with very big numbers. You won't be able to do it backwards. And it's important to get the blocks in your mind as soon as possible. 
So now let's talk about compensation strategy. And what compensation means is that we're going to use easier numbers to work with so that the calculation itself becomes easier. If we look at a first example here, 29 plus 30, well, it might seem obvious to you that 29 is super close to 30, and therefore we could do 30 plus 30, which is 60, and then take away one. But maybe to a first grader, that's not super obvious. So we can just explain it to them and teach that technique uh, as a formal technique. So 30 plus 30, but we need to take away one because 29 was not quite 30, it was one away from it. And this will be equal to 59. You could also work with more complicated operations like 47 plus 53. Perhaps here if you recognize that seven and three are friendly numbers here and so that they will make a block of 10, you can give three from the 50 to the 47 and therefore say that this is 50 plus 50 and this is 100. You can also extend compensation beyond first grade to operations like 99 times 4, which uh, you might encounter in fourth grade and fifth grade. Um, and so you can say that that's 100 times 4 as long as you take away 4. So again, this is a strategy which you can extend. And therefore, this is a very good strategy. And uh, compensation strategy can be very, very useful. You can also borrow from the first number and give it to the second number. So if you have a quantity like 37, that needs to be added to 58. Then you can give two from the 37 to the 58 to make a nice block of 60. And that'll be easy because it's 35 plus 60, which gives you 95. Now, moving on to our doubles, this is something which I personally really enjoy teaching my children. The reason for that is that as we learn mathematics and we extend um, our understanding of number theory a little bit, multiplication by five becomes very important and doubling numbers and halving numbers is a skill that really ties in well with multiplication by five and even squaring numbers up to 100. So this is all way beyond the scope of grade one and grade two but doubling numbers is an essential skill. Now, for grade one and grade two specifically, knowing what double a number is can start with a very easy concept, like what is double three? Well, double three is six. What is double five? Well, that gets you to a block of 10. Um, that's, that's 10. Now, doubling numbers will also teach you the twos times tables. So this is a good extension uh, in terms of what doubling does. What about double seven? Well, this gets a little bit tricky, right? But seven plus seven is 14. And so knowing doubles like six, seven, eight, nine, these are the difficult quantities and they're especially difficult for a second grader or a first grader. So yes, doubling three, doubling two, doubling four, these are easy values to double, but doubling anything beyond five is a little bit trickier. And so it's important to learn doubles like double seven and double nine and double eight and double six. And so I would encourage you to play math games with your child, teaching them doubles. Now there are games that we have on file, which uh, we've created and we'll put links in the description below where you can have like a presentation, like a Google, a Google slide presentation and you can play the, the slide with your child to try and double numbers. There's a level one, there's a level two, level three. I'll make sure to include uh, the donkey doubles game, which I played with my daughter. The link to the video will be in the description below. So why does doubling a number matter? Well, another point is that if you know that six plus six is 12, you'll be able to do an operation like six plus seven relatively easily because it's six plus six plus one. So knowing the fact that six plus six is 12 helps you with decimals, it helps you with 0.5, and it definitely helps you with operations like six plus seven, which is 13, one more than 12. Just like any good technique, this can be extended. And the way that you extend it is you do doubles like double 24, double 28, which is 56, which is not easy, double 37, which is 74, which is definitely not easy, but you can get there if you know that seven plus seven is 14. So you start with doubles from one to 10, and then you can work your way up uh, for doubles to 20 and doubles to 30 and all the way through to 50. And I think it'd be really good for your child to know their doubles up to 49 times two. So this is an absolutely wonderful key skill and I hope you practice this with your child. Now decomposition is our next skill here. And so for this strategy, we're going to break numbers down into easier quantities. And what this looks like is if you have an operation like nine plus four plus seven plus five, well, you can break the four down into a one and a three. 
and the one can be given to the nine and the three can be given to the seven, which gives you nice blocks of 10. And then you have a five that's sort of hanging out there. So this will be 10 plus 10 plus five, which is 25. Now this might seem like a little bit much, like why would you need to do that? And so I'd like to point your attention to the fact that when your child is doing a column addition, for example, of two, three or four numbers, it's not uncommon for the units to have a nine, a four, a seven and a five, and they need to add all this up and work out what the carryover is. And so if while they're doing that, they can use techniques like number bonds and decomposition to get easier blocks of 10 or to break a number down to later get a block of 10, then that will be super useful. And that will definitely make the operation a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot less painful and a lot more accurate. So we welcome techniques like decomposition, 47 plus 19, you could take a one from the 46 and give it to the 19. This is 46 plus 20, which is 66. Um, it is quite similar to compensation strategy, but you have to see the slight nuance here is that you can just break a number down and give it to two different numbers. So not a huge difference, but again, we're always looking at blocks of 10 and this is what's important here. Adding up, now this is another strategy that you can use which is finding the distance from a number to another with small jumps. And I think a lot of adults do this. Uh, and so it's important for our children to learn how to do this as well. So for example, 30 minus 27, well, naturally speaking, we can see that we need to add three to the 27 to get to 30 because it's just three away in the units. So this is pretty obvious. But if you had a number like 64 and you were to take away 28, well, the first thing that you could do is you could add two units to the 28 to get to 30. So that gets you to 30. And so now the operation in your mind thinking, OK, well, I've used two units. I can do 64 minus 30. And then to get from 30 to 60, I can do a big jump of 30. So I'm going to add 30 in the tens. So I'm adding 30. And so now I'm, I'm left with 64 minus 60, which is a relatively easy operation which leaves me with a four, right? So I have to take all these little bits that I've added up, the two, the 30, and the four, and put these together to realize that it was two plus four plus 30, which is 36, and that's the distance between 64 and 28. So again, taking a small distance to get to an easier number to manage, this is called adding up. Uh, it's something that you might do quite intuitively as well, you know, when you get these questions which ask you perhaps on Facebook or somewhere else how you would perform an operation, everybody visualizes mathematics differently. And so this is something that you might do. This might not be something that someone else is doing. That's absolutely fine. Again, everything is down to personal preference and whatever works for you or whatever works for your child is totally good. And now for our last strategy of the day, let's look at the constant difference. So what is the constant difference? This is actually quite straightforward, but I don't think it's very commonly used. Uh, so it's adding the same quantity to both sides. Now this might have a little algebra feel to it because it's something that we do in algebra relatively frequently, but we can use this for counting as well. So if we look at 30 minus 27, for example, well, you could add three to both of these numbers and say that that difference is the same difference as between 33 and 30. So if you were to add three to both of those numbers, then you get a much easier operation. And so 33 minus 30 is three. And of course, that's the same result as 30 minus 27. You could look at something like 50 minus 28. And if you're to add two to both uh, of these numbers, you'd get 52 minus 30. And 52 minus 30 is a lot easier because all you have to do is five minus three in the tens, which is 22. So the constant difference is a, a little strategy that's often overlooked. But it's a very, very good strategy and something that works really well. So I would encourage you to look into that as well. It might be that this is the one that your child likes. So try it out. So we hope this helps you to work with your child on super fun, useful and effective counting strategies, number bonds, compensation strategy, doubling numbers, doubling big numbers, decomposing numbers, breaking them down, adding up, like seeing what you need to add up to to get to the next number. And the constant difference where you find that adding the same quantity to both numbers will make your operation a lot easier. Number bonds, absolutely essential. Make sure that you get those down. Thank you so much for watching. Let's see you on the next one. Bye-bye.